I got a stamp for it. They've had a long week. It's Friday now, so most of us are probably off work tomorrow. Let's push it. With all that we have one last time, and we can maybe relax a little tomorrow. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, dear thank God, you, for bringing us down through another week. Yes, and Lord. indeed, it is Friday, and you brought us through. Thank you, dear God, for this gathering in of your people. Amen. Yes, Lord, God, help us, Lord. Lord, to help see tonight. the faces Amen. of the God, saints us, just lifts our spirits. Yeah. Father, we pray that you would be in this service yes, tonight. Lord. Lord, if you're not here, our coming is in vain. Yeah, Father, true. we invite you in. Lord, we want you to take control. Father, bless the singing, testimonies, the word, whatever is said and done. May it be done to glorify thee. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Before we begin, yes. I would like for us to recite Psalms 133. If you don't Hello. know it, then get your Bible and we want it. And we also we want it to uh, recite it with gusto. <laughs> Psalms 133. All right, with gusto. <laughs> huh? Okay. Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious poison upon the head. It ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew firm and as the deep that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there is the Lord command the blessing, even life forevermore. For brethren to do what? How? Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. All right. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Page 77 in the evening light. Praise the Lord. Amen. Page 77. Thank the Lord. Yes, my God. For me, the blessed Savior claimed his great salvation to proclaim the glory to his precious name. It satisfies my soul. It satisfies my soul. It satisfies my soul.
But before we sing it, yeah, I got help. On Wednesday night, we had a very interesting lesson on hymnody, or the history of certain hymns. This wasn't one of them, but I want to share it with you this evening. Everybody has heard of Fanny Crosby, right? She's a very well-known poet, songster, uh, composer, not really the music, but the lyrics. And um, her history, so far as her personally, was at the age of six weeks, she had contracted some kind of infection in her eyes, and the doctor that they employed to put a poultice on it messed it up big time, and she ended up blind for a lifetime. And I understand that that doctor got run out of town because they considered him a charlatan. Un it was unfortunate to us. We would say, how tragic. But she never knew anything else as she grew up, and she was able to compensate for it with all of her gifts. And someone had said something to her once, you know, how awful it is that she is blind. And she said, you know, when I get to heaven, I forget exactly how this goes, but in other words, when she, the first face she shall see will be her Savior. And that took away, I mean, she was looking forward to that. And there's really times I've read her biography and so forth, and she said that she actually felt sorry for sighted people. And because of her, what we would consider a handicap, it was compensated by all of her, and she was a very imaginative. I'd like for you to look at some of these words. Keep in mind that she was blind. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his mercy, whispers of love. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions. Now, she was blind, but she could see in ways that other people could not. Visions of rapture. Now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. And she says what in the third verse, watching and waiting, looking above. How could she look above when she was blind? She had a vision that went far deeper than the physical eye. Yes. And she had a very keen vision. Well, this particular song was the result of, if you'll notice. The person who writes the verses is on the left. The name is on the left. The one who writes the lyrics is on the left. The one who writes the tune is on the right at the top. So on the left, Fanny wrote the song, but on the right, it shows Mrs. Joseph Knapp. Her name was Phoebe. And she and Fanny were best friends. And this friend of hers was with Fanny on a particular day, and she played the piano. And she had composed this particular tune, and she wrote it to Fanny and said, I need some words. I need words for this. What, what words can there be? So she played it through, and when she looked over at Fanny, she was on her knees praying. And she thought, wow, what is this? So she, she played it again. And when she finished praying it, all of these verses were composed plus one more. That is a gift. There's no question about it. Her songs have depth that many songs, especially modern day songs, don't even touch. So as, you, as we sing this song, if we can, in our minds, consider this was, she was writing, in a sense, she was writing her testimony. An assurance that she had, despite her blindness she had a blessed assurance raptures of or excuse me visions of rapture of watching and waiting and looking above even though she was blind she had a vision in her mind and she said she was really glad that she was blind and she wasn't going to let her blindness make her sad and morose like some people do get for far less. So let us sing it. Let us sing it with expression. Praise God. Hey. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, when I put it, I put it in mind. And a salvation, let you fall Yeah. 
Jesus from me. If tomorrow all the freedoms that we have should be gone and we can worship our Savior no more. Two. 
Listen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anyone Amen. else? Thank the Lord. Amen. A special sin. Praise God. Our song they sang me. Song is they can't you can't take Jesus from me. You heard the song goes through all the different things, situations. You can take my family, my possessions, and all these things. You can't take Jesus. My Lord. Okay. So your mind starts spinning and starts wondering and imagining and saying, man, what, what if this scenario happened? What would I give up Jesus for that? Or what if I had this situation? Would I what what fear did I have? Not so much what you would do to me, but if you if you were to take my wife and my children say torture them that, that would be difficult I'm not saying that's an excuse to give up but I'm saying that would be a challenge but my mind was just wandering and thinking as they were singing the song and, and I've shared this before but it still is it's so striking to me most of us I imagine have read Fox's book of martyrs and, and I, it's worthwhile reading but in some sense uh, it, it's somewhat repetitious in the sense that how many different ways could you kill a person all right, and, and they're martyrs. But possibly they're martyrs, so people are going to die. All right, and and so, uh, but there's one story that just just stands out with me. There was this man who he was I don't think he actually was a pastor, but he was sort of like a spiritual leader, and they had arrested. Him. And and uh, of course they determined they were going to burn him at the stake. And he had some friends and perhaps family members and. Before he was to be put to death, they told him, they said, listen, if, if you, in so many words, this is not quoting word for word, but in so many words, if you still have the victory, give us a sign. He said, okay, I will. I will. So the day came for him to be executed, and they had the, I guess it's like a pole or something, they tied to the pole, and, and they had the sticks and so forth around him, and they began to light the fire and, and, and the wood, and, and the man was standing there burning. And so his friends were looking on, trying to see you know, the, the, the sign he was going to give them. And after burning for a while, they saw his head drop. They said, oh, he forgot to give us a sign. But they continued to watch this a little while longer. And at some point, he raises him, as if to say, in the midst of all this, you can take all, you can, you can do what you want to me, but I still have Jesus. Amen. And that Amen. was so inspiring that in the, 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 to have that the frame of mind to, to, to still give that sign that is still well for my soul. Yes. Oh, that's, that was a beautiful story. Amen. And a, a tragic story, but yet a beautiful story that's being repeated, you know, perhaps thousands of years later. I don't know exactly when it occurred, but no doubt many hundreds of years later. But saints... We can, you know, we can, we can imagine in our mind all that might happen, and 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 there's no need to worry about what might happen tomorrow. Sufficient unto the days, the evil there oh, yeah. yeah. but, but our job today is to draw close to God, to, to to have God to really be real in our heart and our life. So precious to us that no matter what comes or doesn't come, I'm going to cling to Him. To have that mind, to have that yes, that that firm determination. Amen. And that what God is calling for us to do. Amen. Any other expressions? Any other special singing before we go to break? I truly want to thank the Lord. Since we came back from our family reunion a couple weeks ago, I've been having a lot of problems with my left leg. Um, it just give out on me. It's hurt me a lot. Wednesday night, I came to church when I went to leave. Carlton had to help me out to the car because my leg was not holding up. So I decided yesterday, um, I called to see if I could get an appointment to check with the nurse practitioner to find out, and, you know, if I'd done something. So I thank the Lord. She said I had done extra walking on our family reunion, going to old cemeteries, and I just strained my foot or my leg. And she said, just stay off of it for a while. I said, I cannot stay off of it. I said, I get ready to go to camp meeting in a week. I have to get things prepared. She said, because I said, my house is a mess because I haven't been able to do anything. She says, 
it'll still be there when you get back. And I thank the Lord today I got up. I'm starting to have a little bit of pain now, but I've been able to do a lot today and without no pain. And I just thank the Lord for that. And I'm trusting that he'll, will, he'll hold me up. Because you know there's a lot of walking at Bishy, and I plan to enjoy the, my time there. So I thank the Lord that he has touched me. You know, I had Sister Mark pray for me Thursday night or Wednesday night. And um, I, Thursday was a little better, and today I've been a lot better. I just thank the Lord for that. There's nothing else at this time for prayer. On the far side, any else open for every request on the far side? Remember the camp meeting and all that will be traveling. Right, remember the Vichy camp meeting, Janie? Please remember my Uncle Bunky and Aunt Donna. Right. Janie's uncle and aunt. I think it was from our side, on this side, and he also looked at Just please remember my unsafe children. They really need you. What's the Esther? Remember Jay? Remember Esther's husband, Jay Sr., body and soul. There's nothing else unspoken requested by the operation. That's wow. Santa, you don't mind. Dear God, we thank you so much for being God, but we thank you so much for your love and your mercy that you have extended to each one of us that are here tonight, dear God. Lord, Lord we thank you for the gift of salvation. Lord, we thank you that you sent your son to, to save us, dear God, from our sins. Lord, we thank you that we had a mind to accept that gift, and thank you that we are here tonight, dear God, to worship and to praise you. Lord, we thank you so much for each one that is present, those that have traveled for many miles to be with us, and those that are even near that we don't see as often. Lord, we thank you for each one present. And Lord, we ask that you would just be in our midst tonight, and we pray that you would bless the furtherance of this service. Lord, please bless the word, dear God, whoever may be bringing forth your word tonight. Lord, we pray that you would just help us, that we would have hearts oh, yeah. that are ready to receive it, dear God. Lord, yes, help us, dear God, help to us, sit attentively, dear God, and help us to be open to what you have for us, oh, we pray. Jesus, Lord, we thank you that you're able to meet every need, even though each one of us have needs that are several and different, dear God, but we thank you that you can meet us where we are. Lord, we ask that you would do just that tonight. Lord, we thank you for Sister Marie's testimony of how you were able to meet her need when yes. she didn't even tell anyone about it. But we thank you that you're the same God and you're able to meet our needs today. And thank you for touching Sister Linda's body. Lord, we pray that you would continue to help her, Lord, help her to balance her workload and know when to slow down and rest and help her, dear God, and just touch and heal her, we pray. Lord, we ask that you would remember the other requests that were mentioned tonight. Sister oh. Esther's husband, Lord, you know what that request is about, and you know what his need is. We pray that you would just touch him and help him, both body and soul. Lord, we ask that you would remember Sister Faith's um, unsaved children. You see that as a burden to her heart. And Lord, we pray that you would just talk to them, dear God. Matthew, dear God, and Philip and Emily, Lord, we pray that you would just deal with them. And, Convict them, dear God, and help them to long, dear Father, to have a relationship with you, we oh, pray. God. Lord, all of us have unsaved loved ones, and Lord, we want to see them turn to you, dear God. We pray that you would have mercy upon them, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, aunts, uncles. Ooh. Lord, so many, dear God, that are out there uh, walking away um, or wandering away, dear God, from you. Lord, we pray that you would talk to them. And Lord, you know all about the unspoken requests on hearts tonight, Lord, things that 
couldn't be uttered, dear God, things that are too heavy to mention uh, publicly. Lord, we pray that you would just help and undertake there. And Lord, we pray for the request that Sister Janie had for her Uncle Bunky and I think her Aunt Donna. Lord, we pray that you would just talk to their hearts. Lord, you see how he was talking about getting saved. Lord, we pray that you'll just talk to both of them and help them to desire to um, be saved, dear God. Lord, we pray for the upcoming camp meeting in Vichy. Lord, we pray for Brother Campbell. You know all about his physical needs. And Lord, you know all the heavy uh, load of work that's upon the saints there just preparing. Lord, we pray that you would encourage and meet every need, dear God, and bless, Lord, in that meeting. Lord, we pray that it would be a divine work of God. And Lord, that it wouldn't be just a, a gathering of people, dear God. But Lord, just help and prepare the, the way and prepare each heart that will be there. Lord, again, we ask that you would bless the furtherance of this service, and we thank you um, now for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Good. All right, time for the word. I don't know who the speaker is. No, who it's not. He knows who he is. All right, he knows who he is. All right, Darren, God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All right. Unlike many others, I'd be okay if it's somebody else. He was asked to pray about and come with something to share, so we'll do our best the Lord. Okay. to see what the Lord has to say to us tonight, which I think he has laid something on my heart to be able to bring to us. I think I just knocked the microphone out here, so give me a second. I'm to twist it so it won't be upside down. Thank the Lord tonight for his blessings upon us. Yes. Truly Amen. encouraged already by being able to be here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for his mercy and his goodness Amen. upon us. Amen. And I was thinking as well as they sang the song that they can't take Jesus away. You know, the world even tried to take Jesus himself away. Amen. Right. Sure did. But you know what? The world didn't give him. <laughs> right. So the world can't take him away. Amen. That's still the same today. They didn't give him to us. They can't take him away. Amen. You know, the things that they give to us, they can take away. But they cannot take him. They can't take his love. Amen. They can't take his compassion, his care, his concern. For souls that can't take away his love. Uh, so thank God tonight Amen. for Jesus, what he means to us. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm not sure what one's supposed to share in a fellowship, or a, uh, I'm sorry, not a fellowship, but a unity service. But um, I'll just lay out what God has put on my heart tonight. Amen. So Luke chapter 12, we got one verse tonight we're going to read out of Luke chapter 12 and just bring out what I feel the Lord has laid on my heart, hopefully be encouraging to us tonight and a blessing. Luke chapter 12, verse 32, says, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Fear not, little flock. I think we might qualify, right? Yes. All right. We're a little flock. 
But he told us not to fear. Amen. Thank God tonight. We don't Amen. have to fear. Fear not little flock. So I want to talk to us tonight about little flock, grand kingdom. So why don't we go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for the Word of God. We thank you for what it means to us. We yeah. thank you for your Son, you, Jesus. Lord. Lord, how much he means to us. God, we thank you for your mercy, your kindness, your care, your compassion, your strength, the power, all that you give to us. We ask God tonight that we'd be able to share what you would want to be said. God, that your words would go forth. We proclaim what you want each of us to hear and what we need for the hour. God, we love you. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So little flock, grand kingdom. Jesus said there, Fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. You know, what an what a encouragement that we even today can take from just a, a small little portion of Scripture right there that this kingdom that He has given to us was His pleasure. It was His, his honor. It was what He wanted us to be able to take. And in verse... 22, we did not read it, but it sounds to me as if he was speaking directly to his disciples. If we were to back up and catch that verse, it says he said unto his disciples. So tonight, when we read this scripture, tonight if we are his disciple, if we are his child, we are one who is living for him, then it is also to be assumed that it is his good pleasure to give to us Amen. the kingdom. Amen. It is His honor to give that to us. He wants to give that to us. And even though if we were to back up further, even all the way in the beginning of this chapter, it sounds like there was a whole lot of other people around. If I remember right, and I could read it real quick, but it sounded as if there was a large crowd there around even where the disciples were gathered. Because it says in the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch yeah. that they trod one upon another. So his disciples apparently, from what I can at least yeah. gather, were not the only ones around. Right. But yet they, according to verse 22, were the ones that he spoke this directly to. Yes. It is your Father's good pleasure. Yes. Yes. To give to you the kingdom Amen. and fear not. All right. Fear not. What powerful words yes. Yes. that can come from our Savior. Amen. Fear not. My Lord. Thank God today that we can say it's His good pleasure to give to us the kingdom. What a, what a blessing. Yes, it is. The King of all kings, the Lord of all lords. And if he's a king, he has a kingdom, right? right? right. Anyone who's a king has a kingdom. Well, right. here Jesus said it's his Father's good pleasure to give to us the kingdom. So Jesus being the king of kings, as the word says, and the Lord of lords, he is giving that to us even tonight. His people, and there's no other kingdom like this one. That's right. Amen. There's no other kingdom like the kingdom of heaven, Amen. the kingdom of God. The one that He has offered to each one of us. There never has been, and there never will be a kingdom that even comes close Amen. to this. I don't care how wealthy they are. I don't care how powerful they are. I don't care how many people there are. I don't care how tall their walls are. I don't care how much uh, weaponry they have. Nothing compares to the kingdom that He has offered here Thank to His Lord. disciples. It is offered to us even tonight. You know, so many today, even in the church world, are looking for a kingdom that's somewhere out there in the future. They're looking for Him to come back someday and set one up. And then uh, everybody will then be able to become a part of that kingdom. But I thank God tonight, it's already here. It was here then, and it's here now. And it's a kingdom we don't have to look for out there somewhere in the future that we may not even be able to get to be a part of. It's a kingdom now. It's a present kingdom that we can be in. He set it up already for us. We don't have to wait. 
So see, surely if he told the disciples he could have it back then, or that they could have it back then, we can have it now. That's good. We can be a part of it right now. We can be a king's child. Yes. Which I want to look at tonight also. Go over to Revelation if you would. Revelation chapter 1. You say, well, Brother Darren, I'm not sure I'm following you on what you're talking about. But Revelation 1, I think, will give a little insight to what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 6 says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, listen to this, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins, in his own blood. Thank God for that. But what did that do for us? Verse 6. Hath made us kings and priests Amen. unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Think about that tonight. He hath made us kings and priests. If he has a kingdom that's offered to us, then he has made us kings and priests. And he's able to uh, put us in this kingdom. He's able to offer this kingdom to any that are willing to come and receive him and be washed, as we read in verse 5, to be washed from their sins by his own blood. Oh, yes. You know, I had some thoughts about that blood a while back, and they still stick out to me uh, today. And I was thinking, you know, blood in our society today is looked on as a dirty thing. When we uh, at work, we have even classes sometimes, and we in these classes uh, for safety, they even call and talk about a bloodborne pathogen. And maybe you know what that is, maybe you don't, but it is spread through blood. And so anytime someone is bleeding, you're to be very careful yes. because if this person is infected with something, yes. it can infect you. Right. Any open wound, right. if you happen to get it in your mouth, your nose, and your eyes, you can become infected. But listen, Jesus' blood is a clean blood. Yes. And listen, this blood tonight, yes. this blood can not only take out the sin, but it can cleanse you completely and make you righteous and holy. If we're ever to get blood on our clothes, but we know that blood stains. But listen, Jesus' blood takes out stains. Can you read? That doesn't even make sense to the world. But this blood is a clean blood. It's a cleansing blood. There is no bloodborne pathogen that we have to be worried about with this blood. This blood will actually remove stain instead of causing a stain. A clean blood. Yeah. Thank Lord. God for that. Yeah. And by this blood, He's offered unto us a kingdom. Thank God tonight for, that, for the opportunity. You know, I used to be one of those that thought about a, a kingdom out there ahead of us. But I thank God He has showed me Amen. that's not the case. Amen. Just because I believed it didn't make it right. <laughs> Lord, yeah. Did we all catch that? <laughs> Amen, the Lord's got to help us sometimes. Yes, he does. Just yes. because we believed something didn't make it right. True. Sometimes He's got to work with us a little bit. Yes. Get us straightened up. Well, that's what Jesus can do for us. Romans 8, 15 through 17. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And listen to this, the good part. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with Him that we may be also glorified together. That's what this kingdom also has done for us. It's brought us in. It's made us heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Listen, there's no greater thing this world has to Amen. offer 
Amen. to you. Amen. Nothing this world has to offer can replace that right there. And to be an heir of God, a heir, a joint heir with His Son, Jesus Christ, that is the greatest thing that can ever happen to a soul. Amen. It's the greatest thing that a person can ever become a part of. It's the greatest thing that can ever take place in our life. I know people get excited about a lot of things these days. But listen, we ought to be excited because we are the child of the living God. Amen. We are heirs with His Son yes. in a kingdom that He has set up and put in place. Something of dwelling place for His children to come and to be a part of where we can feast at His table. Amen. Where we can hear what His Word says to us. Yes. Where we can talk to Him directly. Yes. Thank Man. God tonight for what He's done and made that off, uh, made that opportunity for each one of us. So we're made kings and priests, Amen. heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Thank God. If we're kings, then that means we're part of a kingdom, right? Yes, yes. We've already established that. If there's a king, then there's a kingdom. Right. I don't know how many nations still have a king today. I'm sure there's some out there that, that do. I've never tried to count it. But if they're considered a king, then they have what's called a kingdom. Mm -hmm. We have a king, but he supersedes all those other kings. That's right. The king of kings, the Word yes. of God says. Yes. It, it acknowledges there's other kings, right? The king of kings yes. means he is the king. He is the supreme one. He is yes, the he one. Is. He is superior doesn't matter what all those other kings do, whatever all they're involved in. This King Jesus is supreme Amen. to all of them. Amen. And I got to thinking tonight about this kingdom. And you know, this kingdom brings about it some benefits. There's benefits of being in this kingdom. Yes, sir. You yeah. found any of those benefits yes, tonight? Yeah. There is a lot of them. And I'm not going to cover them all, but we could find a whole lot of them tonight. But in this kingdom, one of the very first things that came to my mind was this kingdom is a kingdom of safety. Yes. You know, there's All safety right. in being in this kingdom. Amen. There is a special place being a part of this kingdom that we have the Heavenly Father watching over us. Jesus Amen. said there that His first two words in that verse were fear not. Right. You know what that tells me? That we don't have to be afraid. Sister Amen. Mary's testimony, you know, she was afraid of a bill of how it was going to be paid. So many uh, years ago, she can look back and see now that, you know what, this kingdom, God took care of her. Yes. The sure. king took care of her. Yes. This kingdom met her needs. This kingdom brought about the opportunity for that to be met. So Jesus spoke there and said, fear not. You know, and in this day we're living in, it can be a fearful time. We can see all those things happening around us and the enemy can start to come in and try and crowd our minds with fear of what's going to happen, what's going to take place here, what's going to, what's going to take place over there, and, and how am I going to get by on this? How am I going to deal with this? What's going to happen if this happens? Even as Brother David mentioned a little bit, some of those things can start crowding into our minds. But Jesus gave us two very important words. When he said, fear not. Amen. Fear not. That means no matter what else is going Help on us, around you. Amen. You don't have to fear. Amen. You don't have to be afraid of it. You don't have to cower down. You know, we think of 1 Peter 5 and 8 that says, The devil has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. And I don't know about you, but if I was over in the Sahara somewhere and all of a sudden a lion was giving me chase, there's going to be some fear that would come into my mind. Right. How am I going to get out of this situation? Right. But the devil is as that roaring lion and he's coming after us each and every day. And sometimes yeah. the things he does can put fear into our minds. But Jesus says, you don't have to fear. Fear not, little flock. Yeah. For it's your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So there's safety in this. Yes, there is. You know, if we were to read that whole chapter of Luke 12, if you find uh, prior to just where Jesus said that, He was talking about things being provided. He was talking about uh, the lilies of the field and the, and the birds of the air and how, uh, you know, they don't do all the things to prepare and be taken care of, but they still do what God has made them to do. 
may still go through their daily life knowing that they're going to find something to eat. The flowers know that eventually the water will come and the sun will come and, and they'll be able to do their thing and it's just taking place and they don't even think about what tomorrow is going to do. All right, they're just getting through today. And sometimes we have to do the same thing. Yeah. We got to get through today. Yes. The devil wants to put tomorrow in your mind. That's right. right God. We got to realize I'm living today. Right. And Jesus told me I don't have to fear. Right. See, I believe David even had a little taste of what it was like living in the Lord's kingdom. Go to Psalms 27 with me if you would. Psalms chapter 27. But I think also that what all David faced, he was able to come up with these first four verses here. First three verses, I'm sorry, in chapter 27. And know that he did not have to fear. It says there, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? If the Lord's your light salvation, you don't have to fear. Amen. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Right. He's getting his strength from the Lord. He says, who do, whom I have to be afraid of? Lord. And he goes on, he says, When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came up on me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Not him, them. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Are you All confident right. tonight in what you have in Him? Are you confident tonight in your salvation? Are you confident tonight in this kingdom? Are you living in this kingdom? And have you allowed it to become a part of who you are so you can have even the confidence that David did there? That even when the enemy and the foes come against you, he even said to eat up my flesh, that sounds like a pretty uh, disastrous situation. Yes. But he said, I won't fear. Lord. I don't have to be afraid. Because he knew there was safety in the place he was. This kingdom yes. that he even was being able to, to understand a little bit of way back in that day. See, it don't get any plainer than what do you have to fear living in this kingdom? You don't have to. No, no. David made it pretty obvious that what he just said. We don't have to fear. This kingdom has impenetrable walls. See, Jericho thought its walls were impenetrable. I'm sure they felt safe inside there, but they had a false sense of security. Why? Because they put their uh, trust in what man could do. And what man could build, All right. and what man had designed, and what man had had put in place as probably what was a pretty good protection. Right, right. Yeah. But they had put their faith and their trust in that. And along came uh, Joshua and, and all the children of Israel. And as they marched around there, and as they blasted those trumpets on that seventh time on that seventh day, them walls tumbled like there was nothing to them. Right. That's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. That's the kind of, of king that we have, that we are serving. One that anything man tries to prop up and build up is yeah. no match for this king. There's no match for living in this kingdom and they obeyed what they knew that he had told them to do and all that stuff that man had built up came crumbling down like nothing Hallelujah. see it's this kingdom has impenetrable walls the enemy may circle it the enemy may go round and round he may shout he may make a lot of noise he may throw out insults all right, all all he right. might do. but listen these walls cannot be broke there. Amen. Amen. Inside these walls is safety. God. I mean, how much safer can it get when God, His Son, the Holy Spirit, the one's looking out for you. The very Creator of the universe. The very One who sent His Son to die for you. The very One who gave His Holy Spirit to dwell with you, to guide you, to help you, to strengthen you, to encourage you along this way. With him looking out for us, 
What else do we need? All right. What else do we need? Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Listen, there might be heard there's anywhere from seven to eight billion people on this planet right now. And how special is it to be one of his children that he knows exactly what you need? Amen. You're one out of seven or eight billion people on this planet. And the very creator of this universe, the very one that created mankind, the very one that put all this into motion, the very one who set all this up, cares about you on an individual basis. Thank you, Lord. And so who do we have to fear? What do we have to fear? Lord. Jesus told him, fear not. Fear not, little flock. Another thought that came to him. There's no other kingdom that compares to this one. In this kingdom is safety. There is also no other kingdom that compares to this. This kingdom is above all others. One thing that sets this kingdom, one thing, there's lots of things, but one thing that sets this kingdom apart from others, it's not a kingdom that you can just physically see and put your finger on. Right? All these other kingdoms out here today, you can travel to and you can point to and maybe even find them on a map and say, well, there's that kingdom. But this kingdom is special. This kingdom is different. It's not one that is visible to the eye like that. Yeah. It is a spiritual kingdom. Kingdom. Amen. It is one that does not uh, have those physical attributes necessarily. It is a spiritual one that is that is built and that is set up for us to dwell in in a spiritual way, in a spiritual setting. Lord, and it's one that cannot be seen or pointed to. Listen to Jesus' words in Luke 17, just a few chapters back from where we were, <clears throat> where we started out in Luke 12. We go to Luke 17. Verse 20 and 21, he says there, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said these words, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Right. It's not going to be something that you can pull out a map and you can point to somebody and say, that there's the kingdom of God. It's not something you're going to be able to put them on a plane and send them to a specific place and say, this is the kingdom of God. Amen. What you are going to be able to do is show them the kingdom of God by the way you live, Amen. by the way you act, by the things we do, by the one that we give our praise to, by the one that we uh, live for. We're going to be able to show them the kingdom that way. But this kingdom is within us. It is a spiritual kingdom. It is one that He set up and that He gave to us, even as He mentioned to the disciples. It's the Father's good pleasure to give to you this kingdom. So the Pharisees wanted to know when it would come. You know what? There's still lots of people today asking the same question. When's it going to come? You got many want to say, "Oh well, uh, this is taking place. It's about to be. It's about to come. It's almost here." You got this happening or this event, and it's almost time for it. No, listen, you're way off already. It's already here. It's already been set up. It's already been put in place. When Jesus said them words on the cross that day that it is finished, that meant to me the kingdom even was already here. And it was set up and it was in place and it didn't take any more for Him to have to do. It was already here. Amen. I heard one of the craziest things I've ever heard yet when people want to start prophesying about things out ahead of us. I heard something about a red heifer the other day that I've never heard in my life. And still to this day, I don't know what they're talking about. But something about a red heifer being born. Oh, it's, it's close. It's almost here. Listen, we can't get all caught up in that stuff. Amen. Jesus was plain when He said, it's your Father's good pleasure to give to you. Yeah. And listen, yeah. he was here a long time ago. <laughs> Thank and he told the disciples that. It's his Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. All right. Yeah. So to me, that sounds like something that came in way a long time ago. That's yeah. right. Not yeah. something that's still out ahead of us. That's right. Jesus plainly said it was yeah. it coming with observation. It's within you. Yeah. Sadly, many today 
Still looking for that. Look over in Deuteronomy chapter 7 with me if you would. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Now this was a long time ago. But Deuteronomy 7, 6 through 8. It says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people, they're upon the face of the earth. Right. You know, that still holds true for us today. Sure it does. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. What did Jesus say in Luke 12, 32? You're not little flock. What do we see right here? He didn't choose them because they were many in number. He said they were fewer. You were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. You know, we've been redeemed out of bondmen today. Yes, we have. We've been redeemed out of the bondage of the hands of the enemy. Right. See, God Thank you. Thank you. told what kind of people he was interested in, even all the way back there in Deuteronomy, as a holy people. Lord. Right. And it wasn't necessarily going to be a large amount of people. Yeah. I don't know about you, but we don't have to look around a whole lot today to realize there's a whole lot of unholy people well, in this world today. True. God was looking for those that would be a holy people. A little flock. You know, if you say, well, how do you find encouragement in that? Well, he says, little flock. That means there's probably not going to be a whole bunch of us. Well, that's true. There probably is not. Because the Bible also tells us that Jesus' words also said that the broad way was full of people. Yes. That's right. It was a large way. And many were going in it. But the straight and narrow way was few and only a few. That's right. Find it. So he said, fear not, little flock. But listen, this is the kind of people he wants to know. Sure. Peter also echoed this statement that we just read about in Deuteronomy, where God was talking to the people of Israel. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We can find encouragement in this these two verses right here. You might know them even by heart. First Peter 2, 9 and 10. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Listen, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness. Have you been called out of darkness tonight? He said, have called out of darkness yes. into His marvelous light. Yes. It's a marvelous kingdom. It's a marvelous place. It's a holy kingdom that He's called us out of and He's placed us into Thank His family, you, into His body, into His church, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now, thank God, but now have obtained mercy. Oh, little flock, it's your father's good pleasure to give you this kingdom. This kingdom also has benefits beyond anything that can compare in this world. We already mentioned that a little bit. But listen, this kingdom goes well beyond what we can ever think, what we can ever even imagine. And it's one that we can just experience even this benefit of living in and having Him be a part of who we are. Romans chapter 14 Verse 17. Read that with me if you would. Romans 14 and 17. It says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what is it then? It is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but there's also not much righteousness, peace, and joy going on out in this world today and in the kingdoms of man. There's not a whole lot of righteousness and there's not a whole lot of peace and there's not a whole lot of joy. But in this kingdom, 
what's given to you and what's given to me. Thank the Lord. Righteousness, peace, joy. See, it's going to be awful hard to have peace and joy if we live in fear, which I believe is why he started out with that fear not. Because he wants us to be able to experience that peace and that joy. All right. It also comes through the righteousness, being that holy nation, that holy people that he wants, those ones that he wants to be able to experience. And that righteousness, his blood, has made us acceptable to God. It's Thank reconciled Lord. us to Him and made us holy. That's what righteousness does for us. It made us uh, acceptable to Him and, and reconciled to Him. It is a life lived for Him, a life that is uh, given completely over to Him. He's given us that ability to be a righteous people who were not a nation, but are now the people of God. Peace. Peace that is unable to be explained. Thank you, Lord. you ever had any of that? you ever had any of that peace where you just, I don't know how I can have peace right now, but I do. Amen. That's what's available in this All kingdom. Right. That's what part of living in this kingdom is. It's a peace that is unexplainable. Philippians 4, 7 even lets us know that. Talks about that peace. You go over there with me. Just a second. Turn too many pages here. Philippians 4, verse 7 says to us, The peace of God. What does it do? Which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's no other kingdom that's going to do that. No, no. No other kingdom possible to do that. But this kingdom can give us righteousness and peace and joy and that peace that passes all understanding. And that joy Peter talks about over in 1 Peter 1 and 8. 1 Peter 1 and 8. We even have a song about it in our hymn book in the evening light. talks about that joy. It's a joy that's unspeakable. And full of glory. Lord. I'm not doing well turning pages tonight. Forgive me. <clears throat> well, for whatever reason. There we go. Finally got there. First Peter 1 and 8. Whom having not seen ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, you experience that tonight. Yes, you have that joy you, of the Lord. See, it is a benefit of living in this kingdom. It is a benefit of giving him complete control of your life. You can have the righteousness, yes. have the peace and the joy Amen. that no other kingdom can give you. No other right. man or woman on this earth can give you. No other substance on earth can give you this. It only comes through Him and by Him. And it only comes by when we are made a part of this kingdom that He has put in place for us to be a part of. Thank you, Lord. One last thing I want us to look at tonight. This kingdom has no end. Amen. How many kingdoms? Anybody have any idea? Because I don't. How many kingdoms over the years have come and gone? I'd say it would be a lot. It would be a pretty high number of kingdoms that have rose, kingdoms that have fell, kingdoms that uh, may still be in existence, uh, that have been there for some time. But listen, there will be an end to those kingdoms yes, because man put them in place right. man has set them up right. but this kingdom that god has set up this kingdom that god has brought us into and given us the opportunity to be a part of there is no end to it Amen. if you're in it now you can be in it throughout eternity Amen. without end no end to this Amen. you can live in this kingdom forever in daniel chapter 2 nebuchadnezzar had a dream yeah. you all remember that right you remember the dream he had, but over in Daniel, 
in chapter 2 is where we see that he had this dream and Daniel was the only one that could give him what this dream actually meant. Nobody else had any idea. But Daniel, because he knew God, he was able to interpret what this meant. See, Nebuchadnezzar, when he had this dream, you remember the image that he saw, right? I don't think there's a chart here, is there? No. But in this image, there was the head of gold. There was the breast of silver. There was the thighs of brass. There was the legs of iron. There were the feet that were part of iron and part of clay. You remember that image. And probably if you have the Revelation chart somewhere on there, it may show that. But we know that these were kingdoms. Right. And they were prophecies that Daniel was seeing of a process right. of time and the way that things were going to take place. Right. And so what Daniel said and what he saw was the setting up of this kingdom yes. that we today yes. Yes. are yes. able to experience. Yes. This kingdom that we are able to be a part of right now. And if you look at Daniel 2, verses 44 and 45, Lord. It says, and if you remember, uh, there was a stone that come out and it crushed the feet and the toes of that image. And here Daniel tells us in 2.44, he says, in the days of these kings, in other words, the days of the kings of those that represented those toes and those feet in that day, he said, the kingdom, or I'm sorry, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but if you said in the days of these kings, right. then that means it already happened. Yeah, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. He shall set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There is no end. Amen. Man can't destroy Amen. this kingdom. Amen. Man can't take away this kingdom. That's yes. right. Man can't bring this kingdom down. Amen. Man can't take over this kingdom yes. even though he tries. Oh yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> the kingdom shall never be destroyed. Wonder. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Nobody else is going to take it over. Right. It's already got a king. That's right. It's already got an overseer. Amen. It's already got a protector. Yes. It's already got everything it needs. Yes. It doesn't need man's help. Man. It shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall what? Stand forever. Stand forever. I don't know about you, but forever means... Forever. There is no end. Amen. There is no end to this Praise kingdom. God. True time here will end. This time will end someday for you and I, whether it be when He comes or whether we pass through the veil of death. My God. That, our time there will end. But listen, that kingdom will still continue on. Amen. Even though uh, some may still be Amen. here if we are to leave by the veil of death before His coming, His kingdom will still be here, but it will also still be over there in heaven with Him and we'll still be a part of it. Sure. Even once we leave this world. And what He's coming back for is He's coming back to find those living in this kingdom. Amen. Those right. are the ones He's looking for. Yeah. Those are the ones that He's coming back to receive. He's not coming back to set up a kingdom for them to live on in and reign here on earth in when He's already got one set up Amen. that we can live in and reign in right now. Yeah. We yeah. see the songs about it in our hymnal. I am reigning, sweetly reigning. Yeah. Well, what are you reigning in? If you're reigning, you're in a kingdom. Yes. You're a king or you're a priest. Yes. Or you're reigning yes. over something. Yes. Thank God tonight for that. Amen. Amen. He'll consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever. My Lord. Verse 45, Daniel 2. For as much as thou sawest that stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. Amen. That means starting them. Because Nebuchadnezzar, if you remember, he was that head yes. of gold, right? Yes, he was. 
So it was coming to pass from there on after. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, sure. In other words, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. My Lord. And you let it know that it's going to happen. And he said, in these days, the days of these kings, will a kingdom be set up without end. Amen. Praise God. Jesus was that stone. Amen. It was hewn out of that mountain without hands. Yes, that's and true. It came and destroyed in those days, those kingdoms. And he came and he set up a kingdom. That he offered even to the disciples back in that day, telling them in that setting, even when there was all those things that they could have been worried and fearful about, fear not, little flock. Amen. My Lord. It's your Father's good pleasure to give to you, King. Yes, it is. That message still resonates tonight Amen. to us. Amen. I believe Jesus, I believe God is telling us tonight, fear not, little flock. It's his good pleasure still to give you this kingdom. You may already be in it, and that's wonderful. I pray that we are. We can find that pleasure already in that kingdom. Lord, Nothing Lord. greater on earth Amen. than to be a child of the living God. Amen. To be an heir, a joint heir with this son, Jesus Christ. Nothing Amen. greater. Many people want to maybe be the, the child of somebody rich or famous so they can have all their money and their wealth and their fame. Well, listen, it doesn't compare. No, no. No comparison. That's right. That stuff's going away. That's right. Man. You know, I told this story not too long ago back in the congregation. And, uh, it, it's it's true. The two ladies, now, now whether the story is true or not, I don't know. It might just have been uh, something to get us to think, but Heard a story. Two ladies were attending a funeral of a very wealthy man. And as they were sitting there and the funeral was going on, the one looked at the other and she goes, How much do you think you left up behind? The other lady looked at her and said, Every bit. Every bit of it. Sure. Doesn't matter what it was, whether it's five bucks or whether it's five million or five billion. Doesn't matter. It all stays. Not an ounce goes with us. Listen, but the, the riches we get in this kingdom, this one that, that Jesus spoke to his disciples about, there is no end. It only gets better. Yes. Each day, even that we're here, can be better. But listen, someday it's going to be so great that we can't even explain it right now. Our minds can't even comprehend. My Lord. What heaven's going to be Lord. as we get to stand and live and worship yes. and be together eternity yes. for eternity yes. Lord God. Yes. with the one who saved us, yes. the one who made us, created Lord. us, yes. the one who brought us into that kingdom, the one who set it up, gave us that opportunity to live with him forever. Amen. Lord, Amen. tonight you are in that kingdom sure. because this kingdom is God's pleasure to give to this little flock and anybody else that's willing not just you don't start saying that brother Darren said it's just us no that, that, that gets a big mess that's not what I'm talking about but this is for us this kingdom is for you you bring that all the way down to an individual basis this kingdom is for me thank you Lord Man. he wants to put me in it Keep me in it. Give me all the things that go with it. Amen. He wants that for me. Right. And he wants that for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I pray tonight that, that we are. If not, you can be. But I also want us to realize that those of us here, probably the majority of us here tonight, are already in that kingdom. But we can be encouraged tonight and know what a blessing it is. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you. Turn it over to the Lord. Amen. Sister Margie, Brother David, how do you feel you led tonight to continue? Praise the Lord. Praise God. Let us stand. Have a song.
page 138 in the red book was requested. I don't think the verses are here, but I think most of us know the verses. 138 in the red hymnal. Appreciate the message tonight. Amen. Thank God for everyone that has made it out this evening. We would like to acknowledge some that some of you may not know. Some of them we may not know. But um, Brother Brandon, we're so glad that you made it out tonight. Amen. We're praying for you. Thank you. We're glad to see that you're able to be here. Yes. Amen. Amen. We appreciate all those coming from Oxford. Thank God those coming from the Columbus congregation. Um, I forgot your name. Is it Smith? Brother and Sister Smith from Middletown. We're grateful. We, they were here once before and we're thankful to have them back with us this evening. And we want to introduce you to a brother back here that none of us have perhaps met or maybe you met him somewhere else. I met him in Muncie about a month or so ago. Brother Jack McBean. And we're so happy to have him. He's beyond Brother Brandon. Amen. So happy to have him with us. He lives in West Liberty, so he's not very far away. So we're thankful that he chose to come and be with us. And then we have another brother behind Brother Nathan that most of you have not yet met. 
to make your acquaintance with Brother John Holloway. And he lives right here in Springfield. And, uh, he was raised in the Church of God, Al Anderson, married in. Yeah. He's got his roots in Maiden Lane. And we're thankful to have him. He, is, uh, he loves to sing. And so we're grateful for him joining us tonight. And I see a young brother way back there on the wall that I hardly ever see. <laughs> and something tells me that he's a pretty happy young fellow right about now. <laughs> this is absolutely. <laughs> so we're glad to have you with us tonight. Well, I don't know where he lives. He lives on the road, I think, but he's going to be settling down, I guess, in Columbus before long. So... Um, Glad to have you. And anybody else? The rest I think we all pretty well know. Glad to see Brother Murray here tonight. Yes. Appreciate him stopping in. Spend the evening with us. Now, Lord willing, after we dismiss, don't get in too big of a hurry to go because there are some refreshments upstairs that will be served. And we welcome you. You know, the saints love to eat. We love to fellowship around the table, spiritually and the natural table as well. So... We're thankful for all that have made it out this evening, and we'll look forward to seeing many of you in another week plus, well, about another week from now at Vichy. So all of those of you who are traveling, do be safe in your travels, and we'll look forward to an extension of this fellowship over there. My Lord, mm -hmm. my God, help us. Lord. All right. Anyone care to express yourself this evening? All right. Well, then we'll look to the Lord and be dismissed. And um, the one that prays, if you would, ask God's blessing on the food as well. Brother Brandon, would you dismiss us, please? What a blessing it is, Lord, to be able to be gathered together as your children. Yes, my God. Thank you, Lord. In fellowship and as well in the abilities of being able to know the truth about unity living in the kingdom. Thank yes. you, Lord, for that. And pray, God, that you'll grace the rest of the evening and thank you for the ability to be able to as well to go to a, a time of being able to have a, a little food. We thank you for it. We pray that you yes. will bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.